So you can see how matter itself was attracted to the solenoid. The universe and its ether acts like the solenoid. So that's why matter is attracted to electromagnetic wave that's in the sinusoidal wraparound in this chamber right here. Now, if you notice, <clears throat> there's a balance. It gets about halfway, and it doesn't want to uh, go anymore. But if you jolt it through, it'll go through. Now, that's getting into the fundamentals of, of things here, and I wanted to discuss that stuff with you. Um, this is very important to kind of understand how matter itself has its own sort of um, gravity to um, a sinusoidal energy. And our planet Earth, for, for instance, is sinusoidal. It's, it's spinning. It's got uh, two poles. And it's got also a pole just like you've seen here, to all types of matter. And that's what creates the gravity. If this was the core planet and the matter is out here, all matter is being pulled back down to the core. And that's showing right now in the illustration I'm showing you. Um, let's move on. There's a, that's an energy, but that's rel related a lot to the universe. Um, Let's go ahead and come over to this guy. Now, this is my rubber band pushing uh, positive ions out the top, running to the inside of this capacitor I built. And then the other side of this rubber band collector is coming and running to the outside of this capacitor. Now, what I want to talk about with this is, is that we're filling the inside with potential. Now the potential is difference is in the two layers with the dielectric in the middle. Take a peek here. Ready? Now that's just collecting, but it's more than that. You know what else it is? It's the fact that there's a difference in potential, and that's going back to this. It's this weight of this mass will have a travel speed about it towards a sinusoidal pole, like the core of the planet or the cylinder I just built. You see how the similarities are, guys? And we're going to keep moving on to another energy. Woo! I wouldn't want to touch that. Uh, we're going to move on to another energy, then we'll come back over here to Ed Lee Scallon's um, uh, magnetic current. And we'll go into the area where he talks about uh, you can do better yet when he's talking about putting a cylinder inside a iron casing. So here's the iron casing. And here is the fundamentals of things of what we're trying to uh, show. And right now we're going to move on to oh, a different type of energy. And that energy is going to be more related to a transfer of... of um, of um, matter and how energy moves through matter. Right here is a iron rock and let's go ahead and I got a plastic bar with some rabbit fur and we're going to go ahead and charge up this plastic right here. Okay, just touch it and now I just put a charge on it. Now I'm going to rub, come over here and you're going to see 
that is reacting. That's reacting. All right, there we go. I've got better charts. This is a little harder one hand. Usually you like to fold it over and just the faster you do it. There we go. So you can see it moving away now. So both items have the same charge. So let's go ahead and touch this iron rock here. And we put the charge on that. Now let's go ahead and take the rock and see how this plastic. This is a piece of tie wrap, a tie strap hanging from a piece of thread from that piece of wood, all right? So now we're going to come over and let's see the relationship. You can see that it's, look, see it's moving towards a magnetic field, guys. But the magnetic field here happens to be an organic mix. So this is why we're seeing a transfer of energy between a magnet and a piece of plastic. Normally you don't see that. At least things that you, normally you won't see that if we're trying to take a magnet and see a piece of paper move or something. It takes an electrostatic field, which is the energy we'll get back into. That's uh, some joy right there. Let's uh, move over to the solenoid here. Now with the solenoid, we are working on had this idea, this dream, and we're working on a combustible engine conversion kit, and we're going to base it on some of the fundamentals of Edley Scallon, Woo! and we're going to apply it to this guy. This is my engine that I call the Mach 5. This is a Chevy Vortex V6. All right, and this is what we got. V6 design combustible engine conversion kit. It's electromagnetic. Talking about my three stacker coils. Here's the date of the design. And who did it? Bam. So we can start off here. So on this chamber, we'll be pulling. Then we'll be pulling this chamber. And then we'll be pulling this chamber. And 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 then that takes the... You can see right now that the distributor is moving counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and let's not have it go clockwise. Let's go clockwise. So now we're going to, there's position one, position two, position three. Then you go. So you can see now it's moving clockwise. Now this is for both sides. What I'm designing is a head that's specially designed with principles that we spoke about tonight on both sides that will give this block so much energy. Let's go back over to Ed Lee Scallon here. So here's the head, here's the motor, here's the piston, here's the rod, here's the motion of the rod. And the first thing we're going to talk about is something that I labeled as a magnetic spring. But it's really going to be an electronic spring. And the spring we're talking about is what... Let's get some juice out of here. I don't want to get shocked talking to you guys. So the spring really is, is based on when you see this. I can't do it with two hands, guys. So... Uh, I, I mean, I can't do it with one hand, I gotta do it with two, but when you touch this, that goes through. But if, if you were to hold on to it, it would have a spring effect to it. So that's where comes in the Mark V motor. And that is this guy right here. We're calling it the Mark V. Leave your comments, guys, if you like what I'm doing. <clears throat> 
We're going to take a, a, a making a coil system that's going to be looking like a dumbbell. This dumbbell is going to give us the effect of a spring, this electronic spring. Because it's inside this spring here, when you um, fire up one side, it'll pull the shaft to it. And then you fire up the other side, it'll pull the shaft back. When we get into another video down the road, I'll explain how this could work because you're using your uh, Ohm's law and you're building resistance on both sides that would be similar to two capacitors being in residence. And meaning if they were oscillating to like Tesla's hairpin. The reason that hairpin is like a NASCAR engine that I always called it, if you watch my old videos, is because it's it's resonating. And it's resonating by certain components, which would be its inductance, its voltage. And that's where the using Ohm's law, you would be wanting to have a cylinder head system that doesn't get hot. And we can convert the heat into electricity. Okay? So there's a two-part system to allowing enough resistance to allow enough current, which would cause the heat in each one of these coils. And this rod would be oscillating. So the more you juice up this system like a hairpin, the, the more you'd be given a gas to operate. And that would be what would be inside my, my head design that I'm working on. Also, we're going to get into how Edley Scallon right here um, talks about putting a coil inside of a iron. And he says, this time the north end of the coil will be north pole and the south end of the coil will be south pole. Uh, you made, uh, no, let's not go there. Uh, you are still wasting. Here you go. He says, you are still wasting the north to south pole magnets. Do not get one half of the magnets in the steel or iron bar from those which are in the coil. So basically right here what he's telling us is that this coil is losing its a lot, half of its electromagnetic field out here in air, and it's not half of it's going into here. So imagine how much more strength would be in this core. So um, we're going to work on building a encased. dual coil combo that's going to be bolted down on top of here. This is going to be our um, key sensor for which cylinder to fire up. That's the distributor that when we're firing this. Now remember on each one of these we're going to be using not only an encased enclosure of iron, you know, bolted down it's going to be massive, guys. It ain't going to be that long. Trust me, that's just for experimental. But it's going to have a resonant frequency between the coils. And it's also going to have a charging system about it. So it also charges the battery without putting resistance on, without putting a load re on the system. We'll get into that later down the road. Can't give you all my secrets, guys. Uh, this is going to be a fun build, and I hope you guys enjoy it. This is bad to the bone. Bad, bad, bad to the bone. So with the resonant frequency in a coil here,